situation is quite severe. Uh, Iran is further along in its nuclear program than it's ever been before. Um, according to a recent revelation by uh, Defense Minister Benny Gantz, uh, Iran has enriched 60 kilograms of uranium to the 60 percent level. That's almost at the 90 percent level. It's almost at weapons grade uranium. And nothing right now is slowing them down except reports of sabotage. So the only game in town right now has been Iranian determination to push ahead and these reports of sabotage activities. And now what we're seeing is the beginning of international pressure uh, in the form of this uh, IAEA determination to expose uh, new, uh, uncovered, un uh, unreported, undeclared sites uh, in Iran to put pressure on the Iranian regime. And also we're seeing a very large uh, military drill here in Israel and in Cyprus. Um, and one of the scenarios of this drill is a long range strike in Iran. So we're beginning to see a new pressure being mounted on Iran um, and continued progress in the Iranian program. So there are signs then that Iran was not complying with the JCPOA when it was supposed to have been. Well, these undeclared sites were active before Iran signed the JCPOA in 2015. Um, but what Iran failed to do was to disclose all of its nuclear activities as it was required to do. Um, and, it, and it hid those activities. And in fact, the IAEA became aware of these sites thanks to that Mossad raid on a atomic warehouse containing all of Iran's uh, classified nuclear uh, program information during that very daring raid in 2018 in Tehran. Um, Israel was able to uh, analyze that information and, and isolate these undeclared sites, pass that information on uh, to the IAEA, the UN nuclear watchdog. And then a year later, uh, the IAEA uh, began receiving access to those sites after Iran had tried to sanitize them. Um, nevertheless, the UN found evidence at some of those sites of old uh, nuclear activities, and that is how we have reached the current situation with this diplomatic standoff uh, between the UN and Iran. Right. Well, would we be better off with the deal then, so that there would be some kind of supervision, however flawed, of Iran's nuclear activities? It's a very good question. I think, you know, we have to point to the fact that here in Israel, uh, the defense establishment is actually divided over this question. The official position, the position of the state of Israel is that uh, the return of the JCPOA with its sunset clauses, uh, which would all expire by the end of this decade, um, would actually make things far worse because it would give Iran full international legitimacy and link it up to the global economy and enable it to become a threshold nuclear state. Um, but there are voices here in Israel, um, such as former uh, intelligence chief Tamir Hyman, who, who left his post to recently and discussed the fact that in his view, uh, going back to the deal is the least worst option. It would do the most um, in terms of the realistic options on the table in delaying the program. So it's an open question and it's a legitimate debate and it's one that needs to be had. So if the deal does collapse or doesn't get signed, um, it's been stalled for months now, uh, what other options exist to, to stop Iran getting a bomb? Is it, it down to, as you mentioned, Israeli sabotage, uh, possible military strikes? Uh, these None of these these options seem particularly appetizing, do they? No, none of them do, um, including a return of the deal. Even those who advocate for that would acknowledge the many limitations. Um, but the idea um, that Israel has been pushing um, is this sort of plan B, uh, meaning if uh, talks to uh, revive this deal fall apart, um, this is something that, uh, again, Defense Minister Gantz alluded to um, in, in recent months. He's been speaking to international diplomats about this Israeli idea of a plan B. And plan B is really moving forward with this combined pressure, economic pressure, uh, intelligence, diplomatic pressure, power projection, and regional counterterrorism efforts um, in which Israel, the United States, and whichever uh, sections of the international community can be recruited to this cause, and I would not be including Russia or China in this, um, unlike the 2015 situation, all of all of the countries that could cooperate would cooperate to pressure Iran and to make it clear to it um, that it would have to choose between being a, a, an acceptable state in the international community um, or its nuclear program, it could not have both. And that's the plan B that Israel is now promoting um, in its talks with the United States. Yakov Lapin, thank you very much indeed.